good day again ladies and gentlemen and we are back again together and we are still looking at that Mpumalanga prelim that was written uh, uh, very recently right and uh, for those of you who have not subscribed hey where have you been please uh, just become part of the family okay right and uh, we're just looking at uh, question 7 which is based on electrostatics uh, just a reminder once again, ladies and gents, uh, for those of you who need assistance, whether in mathematics or physical science, please don't forget to just, uh, you know, uh, hit us up on our email. Uh, that is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. Right, so let's get into that question seven. We're given sphere A with a charge of 20 times 10 minus 8 coulombs, right? They say it's suspended on a beam. By means of a light inextensible string so they are telling us that a string is light there and it's inextensible so it means it's not elastic right they say the tension in the string is 5.6 newtons so obviously the tension on the string is holding uh, that uh, that's that charge a there okay and they say a second uh, sphere b with a charge of minus 30, uh, 35 times 10 to the power minus 8 coulombs is placed on a thin cylindrical glass tube directly under A. So basically they are telling us what we see there. Okay, so A and B. So this one is placed on a tube so that it doesn't move. And so what's going to happen? This is positively charged. That's negatively charged. And so what's going to happen? They're going to attract each other. Okay. But remember that A is not able to move, so it's in equilibrium. Okay, now first thing they say, state Coulomb's law in words. Of course, I'm not going to write that down. I'm sure by now you should know how to state Coulomb's law. Okay, so I'm just going to say da-da-da. Of course, we know that the electrostatic force between two charged particles is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart right okay so that's coulomb's law so uh, on 7.2 they say draw a labeled free body diagram showing uh, uh um yeah the for sphere a that is now what are the forces that are acting on sphere a right so we need to be very careful of course we do know that the tension is holding that guy up okay so we know there's the tension force over there but which other forces do we have of course we know they are attracting each other right b is pulling a towards itself so it's experiencing a force of attraction uh, that is downwards okay but what else is going on there remember that there is also um, this guy has a mess so in this case there'll be a force of gravity and gravity always pulls vertically downwards. So we know this is going to be tension. This is going to be, okay, and I don't know which one is going to be greater than which. Uh, of course, it would depend on the mass of the sphere. Uh, so that would be the force of gravity or the weight. And this would be, you can say, this is the force of attraction, or you can just simply say it's the force of B on A, or you can simply say it's the uh, electrostatic force, whichever one you want to use, okay? So this is the force of attraction. I'm just going to call it that, okay? Right, and of course, once again, as I did indicate to you, you know, the number of forces that you draw will also be determined by the number of marks that you have there. This is three marks, so it's telling me I'm expecting three forces. Actually, I'm pointing to the wrong thing. There it is there. Now, they say to us, uh, yeah, in fact, I was pointing to the right one. They say calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force on sphere A, right? So how on earth are we going to get that force there? Of course, we are given the magnitude of the two charges and the distance between them. We're simply going to apply Coulomb's law, okay? So that's 7.3.1. So we're going to say F is equals to K, uh, Q of A, Q of B divided by R squared. Of course, that's Coulomb's constant. That's 9 times 10 to the power 9. 
uh, the charge on A is 20 times 10 to the power minus 8. Um, and by the way, please remember when I use this formula here, I'm going to just substitute the absolute values, meaning that I'm going to substitute those values without the signs. What do we use the signs for? To determine the direction, okay? So we know in this case, this guy is going to be pulled downwards. So in this case, we're going to say this is 35 times 10 to the power minus 8 and divide by the distance between them. That's 15 millimeters. Please note, ladies and gents, uh, for those of you who haven't watched our uh, video on uh, electrostatics, you said milli, you just divide by a thousand or you can just simply say milli is times 10 to the power minus 3. And remember, we need to square that. Okay, so let's put that in our calculator and find the answer. And I get an answer of 2.8. So I get that force to be 2.8 newtons. And we know that it's that force of attraction which is going uh, downwards there, right? And then they say, lastly, they say calculate the mass of sphere A. Of course, how are we going to get that mass, right? If we can find out what the gravitational force is, we always know that gravity is mass times uh, um, gravitational force is mass times gravitational acceleration. So I can say, well, let's find out that mass first. Okay, uh, sorry, that gravitational force. So what do we know? The sum of our vertical force, or we can say F net, in this case is equal to zero. So the sum of our vertical forces Okay, forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So what is that sum? Now, you, you can take upwards as positive. It doesn't really matter, down, upwards or downwards. So it means tension, okay, uh, minus, now remember, um, you can add it. You can say plus a minus, okay, let me just be fussy about it, plus a negative force of gravity, plus a negative electrostatic force right um, yeah we can call it fe whatever it is that you wanted to call it and this is equal to zero now we already were given the value of the tension tension is 5.6 okay gravitational force we just calculated there minus 2.8 uh, not gravitational force rather uh, fe uh, the electrostatic force right uh, minus the gravitational force. In fact, we can say it's equal to the gravitational force. When we take it to the other side, it's going to be positive. So we can say 5.6 minus 2.8, and that should also give us uh, another 2.8. Okay? So it means that the force of gravity will be 2.8 newtons, but this is not what they had asked us to find, right? So we were meant to calculate the gravitational, uh, uh, the mass rather, of the object. So all we're simply going to say is that, okay, now that we know that Fg is equals to Mg, this is going to be 2.8, and the mass is what we're looking for. But we know gravitational acceleration is always 9.8. So... All we can do is divide on both sides by 9.8. Okay. And that cancels that. And our mass would simply be uh, 2.8 divided by 9.8. And that should give us uh, 0 0.29 kilograms. And re please remember in physics, we work with mass in kilograms. So that's 0 0.29 uh, kilograms. Okay. Right, and that is how that cookie crumbles. All right, I hope uh, you understood that uh, quite clear and straightforward. Uh, those of you who wrote this paper, I hope you got this part correct. All right, and that will be it for now. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please be part of the family, okay? And I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.